communication with the team of controllers. Roger, thank you. Call again, that panel. Control of all aircraft approaching and taking off at Bahrain is under the direction of operators in the tower, well away from the main airport buildings. And all communications are in English, the official language of the air. Aircraft on the ground cannot move without permission of the chief controller. Go ahead. Uh, you want us to report outbound on the approach. Uh, we're still uh, northwest 12 miles. Okay. I'll go to you to report outbound. The turn is 5010. Change the route for 5310. After takeoff of the left turn on the heading 30 degrees, squawk 0310. Roger, we have two people on board. That's correct. Okay. Go for 71. Yes, sir. We're a pyramid with a uh, long road. So we'd like to go to uh, Damarana Land, sir. Roger. I understand you're going for uh, an ILS, then after that to Lara. That is affirmative, sir. Information continually passes to and from the captain and the controller. They exchange and gather technical details, and it all helps to ensure that maximum safety standards are satisfied. It's just the same for the smaller jets. They operate special charter services for business executives and VIPs who come to Bahrain for connections to some of the more remote parts of the Gulf. It's the responsibility of the Civil Aviation Directorate to maintain a high technical service and operating efficiency every hour of the day. See moderate in open waters, slide in coastal waters, further outlook, no... The Directorate coordinates the work of all the other departments. Quite simply, they have to make sure the airport works, and works well. In the Met Room, the Telex machines chatter away with details of weather from many stations around the world. Satellite communications play a big part in knowing exactly what it's like anywhere at any time. Dusk in Bahrain, the airport doesn't stop or even slow down. Everywhere the lights go on, and a busy night lies ahead. Nighttime is the peak period for aircraft movement when an average of 20 wide-bodied jets from Australia, the Far East and Europe touch down to refuel before continuing their journey. The routine is exactly the same except that now there are far more aircraft and passengers around. While the rest of Bahrain sleeps, the airport is alive with activity. Nearly all those people wandering sleepily around the terminal building are in transit. For some, it's the last chance for duty-free shopping before they go back on board and on to a final destination. It doesn't matter what time it is as far as the catering staff are concerned. Work goes on through the night as usual.
food trolleys are wheeled out to the 26 high-loading catering vehicles, which keep up a constant service between kitchens and arriving aircraft. For those working on the aircraft, every minute is absolutely vital. Everything is organized for the eventual benefit of the passengers, who, quite often, are beyond realizing what is happening all around. If all goes well, and the ground mechanics give the all clear, passengers are being called forward within an hour, and another plane load will arrive to wander around the shops and queue up at the snack bars. Welcome aboard. Hello, ground, yes. Uh, do you want the aircraft? from the roar of approaching jets, the Emir Sheikh Isa bin Sulman Al Khalifa is saying final farewells to government officials in the airport VIP lounge before he leaves on a trip to Europe. Concorde backs away into the darkness. Another aircraft will soon take its place. As night merges into dawn, the tempo and atmosphere at the airport doesn't slacken. Because of its geographical position, Bahrain has always been an important destination and port of call. For 5,000 years, this island in the Arabian Gulf has been recognized as the crossroads of the region. Once the travelers came in sailing downs, now they travel in giant jets at close to the speed of sound. In the chain of airports stretching around the world, a vital link is Bahrain International. Mike Parhat Laga, Karantara Hata. The state.